Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode 3 of 5 in our series on humor. Make sure you watch the first two episodes if you haven't already about humor and the brain and how humor evolved. You can find links to those down in the description if you'd like. Make sure you subscribe, though. That's the most important thing, because tomorrow and the next day we're going to have a special guest in to talk to us more about this topic. But today, artificial intelligence and humor. Could we program like a humor bot? Robots can do a lot of things. They can make recipes, they can play games, they can win at Jeopardy. They can even think for themselves to a certain extent, but humor, for some reason, is very difficult for robots to grasp. Robots capable of humor is sort of the final frontier for artificial intelligence. According to a professor of computer science at Yale, a machine must understand the full range and nuance of human emotion before it can be deemed capable of creative thought. Some believe that humor or comedy, the key is unlocking an emotional intelligence. And if they can do that, it will change artificial intelligence forever. Humor is extremely complex and it's subjective and it embodies the complexities of lateral thinking and problem solving. If you can teach that to AI, I mean, that's a game changer. As the science of laughter and humor intensifies, researchers and engineers are racing to get machines to understand and even tell their own jokes. Although they haven't been particularly successful at this. There have been a whole bunch of attempts. A report in MIT Technology Review showed that researchers at Virginia Tech have designed an artificial intelligence system which would recognize funny pictures. It's something that humans learn early on. It's maybe even in preschool in some cases. And the idea is they were training this computer system to recognize what was funny and what wasn't, humor. The team created a database of 6,400 images, mostly clip art, which sounds terrible. Half of these were intended to be humorous and the other half were intended to not be humorous. Humans were then used to judge which ones were funny and which ones weren't. And that was used to generate an algorithm to understand specific object categories which contributed to humor. The AI system was then encouraged to create a database on its own trying to learn what was funny and what wasn't. It found mostly that, quote, in general, animate objects like humans and animals are more likely sources of humor compared to inanimate objects, end quote. So humans are funny, a vase is not funny. After a lot of testing, the study found the algorithm was able to transform funny images into unfunny images 95% of the time. Mostly, they would replace certain animate objects with inanimate objects, so a funny person with a not funny vase. When asked to make images funnier, though, that's a lot harder. The algorithm performed only at about a 28% success rate. Not so good. Scientists have been trying to get to the forefront of robot comedians for decades. So we kind of pulled together some of our favorite attempts at robot humor. Another one of the artificial tests developed is JAPE, the Joke Analysis and Production Engine that generates punning riddles from a humor-independent lexicon. It was then judged by 8 to 11-year-olds whether or not that was a joke or not, which <laughs> seems kind of weird. There's also the system to augment non-speakers dialogue using puns, which is an acronym for stand-up, and that explored how humor might be used to help non-speaking children learn to use language more effectively. It's helping people kind of understand language by way of humor. There's also the sarcasm detecting program, SASI. This could recognize a sarcastic sentence in a product review, which sounds incredible, actually. You could make half of BuzzFeed's content with this machine alone. And it has a 77% accuracy by scanning 66,000 Amazon.com product reviews. With three different human annotators tagging the sentences for sarcasm, the team was able to train a computer to identify which of these reviews were sarcastic and which weren't. Of course, our favorite one was Deviant. The double entendre via noun transfer program. Essentially, it found the perfect spot in natural language to insert a that's what she said joke. <laughs> it just sounds great. But it's really, really hard for robots to be funny because scientists haven't completely figured out humor yet either. Where it comes from in our brains, sure, we get that. I mean, parts of it. And we understand the social implications. But if we don't understand humor 100%, it's hard to teach a robot how to do that. Secondly, humor is different from person to person. You know, when, a, when I teach 
a computer what's funny and what isn't funny, that might not work for you. It would really just work for me. And humor comes from experience and intelligence, and it's more likely we can program a robot to predict what a specific person would find funny than what everyone would find funny. And this happened in 2015 when a Microsoft robot successfully picked funny captions for New Yorker cartoons. They taught it, though, to pick funny captions, but it was a very specific case. It had to only pick between two captions, and somebody had decided one of those was funny and one of those wasn't funny. Humor also requires some semblance of spontaneity. Jokes come from an unplanned response to something else, and they're usually unpredictable. This would take a robot to have a very complex brain. It would have to be able to react, process what was said, and then independently think of a humorous response based on what that robot already knows was historically funny, and then what would be funny to the person perceiving the joke. Think of how complicated our brain is that we can do that without thinking about that whole process. You tell me a joke and then I spit a joke right back at you that I know you would find funny because of my experience with you and my experience maybe hearing or telling that joke in the past. That's a lot going on and we can do it in a heartbeat. Machines have to be taught everything in order to do that process. It's also difficult because robots, you know, they're computers. So they're smarter than us in some ways, they're faster than us in many ways. And that can pose a problem when teaching something about humor because the researcher had a robot tell her a joke, but it was, she didn't get it. It was over her head. And that, I guess, comes back to the robot's inability to read the room, but you know, they didn't teach it that. So this is why humor is so hard, especially in robotics. Not only do we not understand humor in ourselves, but the aspects we do understand, they vary from person to person, community to community, country to country, and we've yet to build any AI complex enough to go through all of these different brain processes and finding out what's funny in a short enough time to replicate a very complex human emotion, because that's also part of it. As the old joke says, what's the most important part of humor? Timing. Doesn't work when you're not in the room with me. The only times we've succeeded in making a computer funny are from pre-programming. Like the Japanese robot that responded to the question, how many people work at this factory with? We have two swans. <laughs> it recognized the setup of the question, how many, and then it came up with this ridiculous answer. And we as humans recognize that as humor, but this is a comprehension thing programmed into the computer and it's not exactly planned intelligent humor. People are working on this, of course, but it's gonna be a long time before we crack this final humorous frontier. One of the problems, though, that we still have with humor is what makes things funny? And we're gonna talk about that tomorrow on Test Tube Plus, so make sure you come back for that. We're gonna have our special guest in, and I'm not gonna tell you who it is. It's gonna be special. He's a special guy. Now we're gonna have another joke from our producers to end out this episode while they put that into my script here. Why don't you go down into the comments and tell me what your favorite type of joke is. I'm a huge fan of puns. I like dad jokes a lot. I like one-liner jokes. But what about you? What's your favorite joke? Tell us down there. And thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes. This is only three of five. We've got two more coming. You can come find the show on Twitter at Test Tube or me at Trace Dominguez. So now, joke number three. A pirate walks into a bar with a steering wheel on the front of his pants. The bartender says, what's that thing for? The pirate says, I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. <laughs>